and then just and if you're seeing this outside of the group you're very welcome um this is to look at our new indicator that is coming out the 6th of june and i'm going to show you kind of the results from it cold out the box and how we're trying to edge ever closer to that 100 percent elusive win rate that you we know we're never going to get all right we know that but let's do the best we can so if you're watching this on recording or live just drop a comment um probably won't be able to see you is that always kicks off let me put that over there and i'll try and view any comments i've not made this like a, a chatable link um because it's just the ramblings of, a, of me <laughs> right so uh if i share the screen uh we are going to be on screen one by the looks of it hi tony hope you well right um yeah like i say if you're jumping on guys i can see some people on say hello let me know where you're watching what you think to the new ninja cat let me know what you what you think to what i'm about to show you as well uh, right if i'm correct you can now see eurocad if you could let me know that in comments i'd appreciate it right so here's what we're going to do guys we are going to get rid of those what we're going to do is we're going to look at eurocad and we're going to start looking at it from here all right and we're going to see how we do that's from god knows when that's from right so oh that was from this morning right so we're going to um what jpy must have gone oh, no, jpy is about to break through right anyway that, I'm, so that's an aside right so um so what i've done is i've just gone and i've counted every ninja up and every ninja down trade that ninja cater gives us now before anybody says anything you can get these ninja ups and ninja downs now it's the, the current version of the ninja cater it's just that you have to be on high kanashi candles with this new version that's coming on the 6th of june you don't have to go back to high kanashi candles so it just makes everything back testing you know a lot easier so um all together we have um we have a total Total 26 trades I've counted. All right. Um, so there are 26 trades altogether. And as you can see, it's a it's a 25 pip stop loss and a 10 pip take profit. That one one got nowhere near the, the you know the, the stop loss. This one again, nowhere near stop loss, straight win. This one straight win. So then what I did is I took the ones that lost, like there's a ninja up here. And that one lost. And what I'm interested in, why did it lose? Well, we can see it hit the 50 moving average. And every time you get to a, a line, you can bounce or break. But we could have applied that argument to this one, and we probably could have got out there uh, rather than you know wait for it to go down. And this one went to the 62 moving average. That's what the blue line is, the 50, and the 62 is the orange. All right. So you could use that as a criteria. Um, but on some of these, I'm seeing, you know, that, you know, we're right on the 50 moving average there, but it, that one won. So it's not a 100% way of determining whether the trade's going to win or lose. So I marked off all the ones with an asterisk that lost, and we've got seven, we've got seven losers, right? So um, if we take the market cold, okay, cold results, no, no analysis or anything like that um it's um what did i say it was so we had 26 trades um minus what did i say seven so we've won we actually won then 19 divided by 26 equals right so 19 over 26 equals a uh, 0 0.73 percent win rate Zero analysis. Then I'm interested in, well, how, how can we improve that? Well, the first thing I thought, well, if you go to the scanner, you might sit, notice there's um, a Euro CAD trade here. And guess what? That's what I've been looking at. And that's why I went from here. So this is the D point. Scanner D point. Um, so that that's what we're looking at now. Now, if we use the scanner, the scanner is telling us we're only looking for down trades. If I just put a quick pitchfork on here, we haven't hit the median yet. 
there's still potential here. You know, you can you can put that line on, you can see where it got stuck. It's clinging to this line at the minute. So we might get a bit more of a, a thrust up. And again, if you're watching, guys, let me know in comments if you haven't already. So you see that. OK, we might that might go up eventually. That should eventually hit the median. So we've got we could take more trades on this. So that's the first thing I thought. Well, if we exclude the up trades. We actually had four losses, down losses, three. So we only had three down losses, right? Um, so I haven't worked that out, and I guess we don't need to know. Uh, but down wins, they're the ones we should be looking at. Okay. Um, let me just count the downs real quick. If we only look at the down trades, oh, there were 15 down trades. I did add it up. Right. Okay. So out of 15 down trades available, okay, we win. Uh, there were three down losses. So we win 12 over 15 equals 12 divided, 12 divided by 15 times 100. Our win rate is 80% if we ignore the ups, right? So that is something I'd be interested in doing, right? So what I'm interested in now, these are wins, down wins don't matter, okay? It's, there's the down wins. I'm saying only go for downs because the scanner said down. So that leaves us with these three where I put the lightning bolt. So these are ninja downs where we have a, a loss, right? So why did they lose? That's what I'm interested in. Why did they lose, okay? So the two things that I thought to look at, one is MACD, and then I know our sister group, they're doing something similar to the Ninjicator and they're using TDI. They're involved in that. So I'll explain where to get it in a minute, but you can see this yellow line in the middle. So you've got outer, uh, I forget what they're called, volatility bands. So th this is a bit like Bollinger bands, right? If the price basically breaks out of there, you, you, you should be due for it to come back down. But, um, Although, you know, we've got that situation here. Look, we've got a ninja down and it hit, you know, it did its 10. Um, the, it kind of consolidated and then went up. So it's, it's probably not, well, no, it did go down to be fair. But that, that move there doesn't look as strong as that move there. But we won the trade, it doesn't matter, right? What I was interested in are the yellow line, which is kind of the baseline, right? And something that Jeff, Jeff was uh, testing GDI, uh, TDI with some stuff. So I remembered that and asked Jeff to take a quick look. And in a video that he did for me, he said, look, if you're looking for a buy, really want these two lines to be above the yellow line. And if you're looking for a sell, if they're below, it kind of indicates a downtrend. So they're below the yellow line and the price went down a lot. Uh, here they're above and the, it's a bit slow, but the price did go up. So that was one option. Um, and I was looking and there, there's a loss. Now you can see the two lines, the red and the green, think buy and sell, red on top, sell, green on top, buy. But they're all kind of laying on top of each other. Don't take the trade. There we go, sorry. Right, they're all on top of each other. Don't take the trade. Here, look, we get a ninja down. It didn't quite make it, right? Hit stop loss. Eventually it would have won, but you know, too big a stop loss. Again, the lines are all on top of each other. The volatility, volatility bands are really tight. What are you thinking so far, guys? What are you thinking so far? Let me know. Okay, just do something <laughs> for me, please. Um, a ninja down here. Um, Bollinger band, uh, the volatility bands aren't too bad, but look where the lines are. They're all tight they're all tied together and let's compare that with a couple of wins we've got a ninja down here the lines are below the yellow line we've got a ninja down here the lines we actually got a bit of consolidation but it, i mean it did it quick but we got a bit of consolidation but you can see uh on the ninja down the lines were just going underneath red on top indicates sell and the lines were just going below the yellow there right so we could use this potentially is a very simple, a very simple way. We've got an injury up there. Now I'm saying only ignore the ups, but look, I mean, green is on top and it's above the yellow and then the band started opening. You could have taken some, each, this is 15 minute time frame, switch candles 15 minutes. 
that might have given you the confidence to take that one. And that's something I'm going to look at more, I think, potentially. Here, look, Ninja Down did it, red on top. That means sellers in control. Um, everything was a bit tight up here, all your moving averages. But it came down, it came down, it came down. Um, and it went there, it went below just for a tad, and then it started consolidating. You know, then it was all a bit tight. So here we can put our trust in the Ninja Cater and then decide on some criteria here. Maybe you wouldn't have taken that one because the lines were above the yellow. This one here, I'd, I would say definitely don't take that because these are cons these are consolidating. Uh, I mean tight, I mean really constricted, really tight. They're really constricted and tight there, look. So I reckon, and this, this is an iffy one, but why wouldn't you take that down? Well, the green's on top and they're all on the yellow line. So you don't know what it's going to do. So I reckon we could actually stay out of some of these losses. Uh, like here again, look, everything's tight. You know, it's 5.45 in the morning, UK time. It's not the best time to trade, right? Um, so yeah, what do you think? And then the other thing I looked at was MACD, but I'm found, what I've been finding is that if we look here, um, that we've got green bars, the lines are on above the zero line. So you probably would take that one. But as you can see, it hit stop loss there, look. Um, this one, this one I was a bit concerned about, this ninja down here, but if you actually look at it, it did actually do its thing. Um, it didn't hit, there, there's that dotted line as the stop loss look, and it didn't hit stop loss. Um, there's the win, and the actual, it actually triggered here for the win. So that one was okay. It took ages, but again, guys, it's you know four, quarter to one in the morning. Wouldn't be trading it. Uh, right, the indicator. So, so I'm probably going to get rid of the MACD for this, right? And the indicator is called TDI. So if you go and you search for TDI, okay, there's a DeLorean user, and I think that's where Jeff mentioned it on the video. That's where he saw it. How they use it, they use it to sort of exit trades as well. Um, so there's a DeLorean TDI, uh, but the one I put on was this one, this Gold Mines edited for MMM by Jacob or Donovan or something. Um, and then there's also this one, the uh, TDI Divergence Indicator. But I think we're trying to be too clever if we use that one. Because here we've got a ninja down and this says bearish, so it should have worked, but it, it didn't, it lost, <laughs> All right? So I don't like that one. That one's got a lot of lines on it, and I must I need I need it to be simple. And this one is good. By the way, you can mark lines on it and say, well, if the price is there, look, that's basically says it's it's over, it's oversold, so the price should go up, and it did. And if it's above this dotted line here, the 70, I think it is, there, look, it's over, it's overbought, the price should go down. And it kept going up. So this could be news and stuff, right? Um, I'll show it again. I'll show you that indicator again in a minute where to get it. So, I mean, that could be news and stuff. Fair, fair enough. I mean, it gave us the scan, right? But I've not found that to be significant. I found it more about these green and yellow lines and where they are in relation to the yellow line and how constricted these uh, volatility bands are. So, again, just to show you again, it's called, if you search for TDI, it's uh, TDI Gold Mines edited for MMM by Jacob, somebody or other. Uh, Jack of Donovan, yeah, it was Jack of Donovan. There you go. Um, it looks like we might have the code for that as well. Yeah, and there's the code. So what I need is people to test it. So you know what it's called. You can message me if you're not sure, but Without doing anything, guys, we've got a, a 15, we've got a 12, sorry, 12 out of 15, 80% win rate without doing anything. All right? If you ignore the ups, if you only take the downs, because the scanner said down, we've got an 80% win rate without even trying, which is pretty good. Okay? Um, if we can avoid even one of those three losses, all right? Let's suppose we didn't take the trade. 12 divided by 14 gives us an 85% win rate. If we could avoid two of the losses, okay? So it'd be 12 divided by 13 times 100 gives us a 92% win rate. And obviously if we could avoid all three losses, we'd have a 100% win rate. So 
any questions before I shoot off? But that, that, that's what I spend some of my time doing, guys. This is how I came up with Ninja Trading System. You know, just playing around with things, making notes. I've got, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got notes here. You know, as I've been counting and scribbling and, and checking. Um, and I think this could be a good, in, in conjunction with Ninja, with the Ninjas. Brilliant. Pretty formidable. All right, I can't see any questions. There's only four people watching, so I'm gonna sh I'm gonna head off and do some more work. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna keep an eye on this. And if you guys that are watching this, if you could test it as well, that would be awesome. I'll see you on the next video. Catch you there.